and welcome to another episode of Motors for the Masses and today we are back on the NTV because we can't do a great deal else because of the lockdown. So it's fork seals time. Now we've got some new fork seals arrived for this so we're going to get the forks off and show you the process of changing the seals. So let's roll the intro and get cracking. On my own. So the first thing to do is to get these caps off, so we'll get those off, don't lose them because you'll need them back on afterwards, and then we shall get those undone. So what are we actually going to need for the job? Well, we're going to need bushes, we've got inner and outer bushes, we also need the actual fork seals themselves, and of course the dust seals to go on the top. We also are going to need some fork oil, now this is a bit of a minefield, now from research it seems when this bike was new it had five weight fork oil. But, as the years have gone on, it seems from a lot of people saying online, the front end can be a bit divey with such a small weight. So we're going to go with a 7.5 weight. And hopefully, with these knobbly tyres, should make it just soft enough, but a little bit firmer than standard. So let's get started. So job one is to tie the back end down, with it being on the centre stand, so the front wheel is free. Like so. Luckily there's nothing attached to here now so it's going to be quite easy to get the front wheel off so we can then start working on the forks. It's also a good idea to cover up the tank. Now to do this and access these nuts properly it's going to be better to take the handlebars off so we'll undo them, rest them against the tank and then we can get to these nuts properly. So, once these are out of the way, always a good idea to put these back in place because then you won't lose them. And then we have to play the guessing game as to what size that is. If you can guess, stick it in the comment section below. Too late, it's a 17. Right, slight change of plan. Um, with <laughs> moving that up against the tank, these were catching on here and the handlebars were scratching on here so I don't want to damage the handlebars. So use the bungee just to tie them up out of the way and then I we'll have to use the breaker bar ones. Okay, stand by for action. Righty, tighty, lefty, uh, not tighty. Right. Oh, there we go. One. Oh, bloody hell. Yes, right. So at this point, the wheel has to come off. Now Nick has arrived and he's willing to help, but he doesn't want to be on camera. So that suits me because I'll be the other side of the camera, keeping my distance as is uh, technically what we're supposed to do. And he's gonna, Take the wheel off. I'm going to do some tea. Coming through! Need tea! Ah, carry on. Now, at this point, the horns have to come off because they're in the way of the pinch bolts. And Nick, Nick has asked, why does it have two horns? Because it's not standard. I don't care. They had two horns when I got it, and I actually like the fact it's got two horns because I've got two dials, Two lights, two horns. It matches. I like things that are symmetrical. Go with it. Looks silly. Looks cool. You know what you're talking about. Oh, I'll break the bar. Okay, it seems Nick is getting braver. He wants to say something. Uh, take these bolts out and clean them because they're rusty. They don't have to come out normally, but how bad that is. It felt horrible. We'll pop some copper grease back on when it goes back together. And these are the pinch bolts that hold the forks yeah. in. <laughs> the bike's talking to you, it's going, no, treat me nicely, don't hurt me, ow, ow, ow. Does that hold something? 
That's the bracket that holds all the wires in place. I'll leave that where it is. Yeah. So, now with the pinch bolts out, that will mean these can move out of here. These pinch bolts hold them in place so they don't slide up and down on these brackets. Those indicators do not need to go back on. They can come off permanently as well. Yep. I want to apologise if it seems a bit odd with some of the camera angles, but that is because we are trying to practice good social distancing. Because we do want to set a decent example. I know it's always difficult and we are open because we are a garage that is open for essential workers. So we are still in the proximity of each other. We're just trying to practice social distancing as much as we possibly can. We want to be responsible, believe it or not. Um, leaving the other leg in just so I don't have two sitting around and I know which one's which. That was under a lot more tension than I thought. <laughs> what just fell off? It's just a shim. Just a shim? Yeah. And what does that shim do? Keeps the spring in place? No. Yeah. It's got a little hole in it. For what reason? They're not adjustable at all, so. Is it a nice little gas over here, or is it pissy oil? It's the oil in these forks. The I've just undone that like smell. Gas. That's sulfur. Okay, so if you undo the forks and it stinks of gas, that's normal apparently. Can I have the um, tray? Take it out, please. That'd be great. I did not realise it smelled of gas. Yeah, it's the sulfuriness. Brilliant. The sulfuriness. I think it's sulfur. That's Norfolk for like the smell of sulfur. Norfolk or Suffolk? Norfolk or Suffolk? oil. Actually from Dorset. Dorset? Alright. Oh, you just became thick when you came up here? Yeah. <laughs> so that is what's inside. It's all gunky and awful and that one needs scraping out and cleaning before the new seals can go in. I will show you the process of how to get that out on the next one. Uh, because there was someone here talking because they've just bought a Triumph. So you want to come and show me. So, <laughs> yes, little stop there, but um, Nick is going to uh, finish off doing this and we will roll the cameras again when he's on to that one. So now we're going to go through the process of changing the entire fork. So the first thing is to undo the pinch bolt at the top of the yoke. And then you can slide the fork out because you've already released the pinch bolt the bottom yoke. Next you have to take off the nut at the top with the 17mm socket. Undo that and be careful because it's under tension so the spring will pop like Nick found out last time and the shim will disappear. And then you can take the spring out. Now when you take the spring out, be mindful that it's going to bring some oil with it, but you also need to put the spring somewhere where it isn't going to get covered in dirt and dust. Because it has to go back in, clean. Next you carefully tip the fork oil out into a container. Make sure you pump to get out all the oil that's in there. It's like an elephant being rogered by a seal. <laughs> Alright, next you have to slide in the bottom of the fork and undo the nut that holds the, um, the Damper unit. slider with what? Damper unit. Damper unit, that's the one. In place. If not, you'll fall. Now, be mindful not to undo that before you take the spring out. Or the oil. Yeah, otherwise you get oil shooting everywhere and the spring could go, bye! <laughs> then once that's undone, you can tip up the fork 
and slide out the damper unit. Someone has used some uh, instant gasket here instead of a copper washer at the bottom to drop start any, stop any oil leaks. Um, also the head of that nut seems pretty damaged so good to replace that and use a proper washer. Copper washer yeah? Yes. Then once the damper unit is out, just give it another pump to get rid of any excess oil that's still in there at the bottom. Next comes the actual dust cover and seal itself. So just prise off the dust cover, thusly. Do it gently a bit, a bit. Yeah, don't try and do it from one side because you can split it and because obviously the fork legs are aluminium, you can damage the fork legs. Pretty damaged already. Yeah, so that is uh, quite crap. Can you see that? It's been chewed up, but that's not good. So that's probably part of the reason why it was leaking. Well, well, I mean that would let's stop it leaking from there, but it might take up and down yeah, the lens, uh, get bits of grit and stuff yeah, in there. And, yeah, palm to forks. So next come the actual seal itself. Oh, you got, to, you got a clip first. Oh, sorry, the little circlet. So the circlet comes out that holds the seal in place. Forgot about that. Keep hold of that because you'll need that to go back in. So that circlet comes out. You just put that to one side, make sure it's nice and clean and doesn't get bent. All right, slide hammer action. inside of the actual leg look again nice and crusty that needs cleaning out before the new seal can go in wow, lovely that's age for you do you think everything gets that crusty with age well impossible to say items do right what's next then nick what are you doing there taking off the um bushes bush? uh, Yep. There's sort of the outer bush there. So, with the bushes, how do they come off? One will just slide off one end. The other sits in a recess. You just have to widen it a little bit, slip it over the end of the recess. And that's off. So, widen the end and slip it off. Interesting. Do you think it's just my mind that um, puts innuendo in everything or...? Yes. No, I, I'm, I'm sure there's innuendo in every part of mechanics. There's lots of widening in and flanges and slippage and prising and pushing and pulling and... Um, Nuts. <laughs> yeah. Screwing. So with these forks as well, you'll find that they are a little bit pitted. So the best way to do that is to use some uh, fine sandpaper, um, 400 grit or 600 grit, we've actually got 600 grit, and just uh, clean them up a bit, get rid of some of the pitting. Now you were saying there's a certain way to do that. Uh, yeah, to go up and down rather than... So what happens if you go round and round? Um, I think it's to do with the machine and the metal, it's better to go up and down than it is to go round and round. Right, okay. Not to do lots of directions. Right. So you can see on this leg here, look, there's quite a bit of pitting. And some of the chrome has come off. Now, you can of course replace these, but I'm not going to bother because uh, it's going to be a, a budget build scrambler and it's going to be an apocalyptic style scrambler and I'm sure they didn't have pristine forks 
in the apocalypse. I don't know, we're yet to, well, I don't know how far we are away from that yet. We'll see. About a week. <laughs> so, the new bushes that are going in. I'm assuming, correct me if I'm wrong here, that the inner goes in first. You can do that first? You could do that one last, it doesn't really matter. No? You just think the inner would go in first and the outer would go in second? Yeah, I just do it in order, I've took things off. So. Fair point. So with the outer in place, the inner just goes inside the recess, yes? Yep. A bit worried actually because you can see on this old one here, you've got this bronzy colour. That's like an, a really anti-friction metal, it's supposed to be really, really smooth. Um, when that wears away, then you know they need replacing. As you can see, half of it isn't, half of it is. And we go around, there's a little bit missing. Now this is supposed to be a new one, I've just took it out of the box. We haven't got any of that bronzing at all. Um, I just need to check with the supplies of that to make sure that that is correct for that for, for that bush. Well, I haven't seen that before, so check that first. Okay, so it should have bronzing. Uh, normally they should. Yeah, as you can see on this one, you can see where it's been and where it's worn away. That's like an anti-friction metal because that's. Oh, so that's the, the, the bronzing is before it's been. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, new. That would look more like that than it oh. would that. Oh, right, okay. And I've just took that one out of the packet. Yeah. yeah. It looks like that. So. All right. So, having just checked the supplier, uh, there is another layer on top uh, and the bronzing will be underneath. But as it doesn't move, it's not really a major issue. So, I'm happy. Let's crack on. So, what are you cleaning that out with? Oh, brake cleaner. Right. Doesn't leave a residue dries. But it's very good at removing stubborn oil and grease and whatnot. So you don't need to scrub it with anything, just clean it out with that? Uh, I'm going to just, just rinse it out first, get this, most of the old oil out and then I'll just get in there with a, probably a little pick just to remove any rust, maybe a bit of... wet and dry. <laughs> Obviously you I don't want to... when the end of that sentence was coming. <laughs> I was just concentrating on that. <laughs> You don't want to be putting gouges in anything though, or rubbing anything down, because everything's machine fit, so you just want to clean off the worst of it as best you can. Okay. So once you've done that, secure the bottom part of the leg, and then in goes the top part. Now comes the delicate bit. What you have to do is bang in the seal, well, not the seal, just the bush to start with. Oh, sorry. That's why I'm using this metal bit, because we're pushing on a wash and we're not pushing on the seal, so we can just give that a few taps to get that seated. Yeah. So how do you know that the seal is as far down as it needs to go? You'll, you'll, you'll hear, you should hear a different tone when you start whacking on. It'll, it'll hard. stop. Right. And it, it should all stop. I mean, it'll feel stiff every time, but you want to look to see the gap. Feel stiff every between. time, apparently. The gap you've got between the uh, recess of the circlip and then you've got the wash, there should be a fair gap in between to, to fit the seal in. So once the bush is in, then comes the seal. So with the seal, you grease it up first. Right now, ideally, you should use this to put in the seal. Um, however, our one is broken. Uh, it broke uh, a couple of days ago whilst doing uh, a different one. So we've got another one of those on its way. In the meantime, we're going to use the same thing that uh, used to knock in the bush, which is why I got confused last time. But you just have to do it extremely gently. As long as it's pushed on the right part of the seal, not too much of a problem. Now yeah. Nick has done this half a billion times, so... 
this is the uh, issue that uh, Nick has because he can't quite reach the top. <laughs> so he's improvising. So with the gentle action finished, it's in. Then comes the clip and the clip goes back inside to make sure that the seal doesn't come out. That's the, the fork seal, not the seal that's been shagging the elephant. So once the clip is in, then it's time to put the dust cover on. Put a bit of grease on it, slide it down over the top, and just push it into place. You don't have to hit this one. There you go. So on reassembly, the first thing to do is to put back in the damper. That slides in there, and then you secure it in the bottom screws into there, through here, with the bolt. So next comes the spring and fork oil. Now when it comes to the fork oil, there's two different ways of doing it. You can measure with a jug the amount that you need to go in, but there's also an a, um, an air measure as well. So you've got oil measure, how much oil can you're in, and air measure. An air gap. Like a, a gap, yes. That's what I meant by air measure. I know what I meant. They know what I meant, I'm sure. So basically, you can measure that gap. And Nick has uh, got a ruler here with a mark on it showing where that gap needs to be. So he's going to do it that way rather than measure the oil because there is a risk that you could leave some in the bottom of the jug and you can't always get it all out so you might not get exactly the same amount. With this you can measure to the right millimetre the air gap which is basically doing it the other way around but it's exactly the same. So with the oil in you pump it up and then stick the measure in the top and see where you're at. I'm not going to film that because it's boring it's just you masturbating a fork leg at the moment. Hello, two hands now. <laughs> All right, big head. Oh, I've got the Thank you. Was that part of the plan? No. Right, once that's in, then the spring goes in. Now, this comes the tricky bit because not only do you have to put the spring in but you then have to put the shim on and put the nut back on which has a very very fine thread without cross threading it so no pressure in it And it's in. Now be careful when you do this to make sure that you push it down equally so you don't cross thread it. So you're pulling up and pushing down. Yeah, so you're pulling the fork leg up with one hand, pushing down with the other hand, and it should all be good. And then pump it just to make sure you've got dampening, and then give it a wipe and a check to make sure there isn't any leakage. And then it's just a case of Nick putting in the uh, fork leg back through the bottom yoke and the top yoke, tightening up the pinch bolts and putting the caps back on in here. And I'm going to leave you there for now. Thank you very much for joining us. Please tune in next time when we'll probably be back on this, I should imagine, or possibly on Bob if I can get hold of Malcolm and he's not ill. So uh, I'm going to go for now because Len has just bought me a nice cup of tea. Thank you very much, Len. And uh, we'll be back very, very soon. So please, until next time, stay safe. We hope you found this informative. And unfortunately, we couldn't bring you any more. But, you know, we are doing our best. We urge you once again to stay safe and look after yourself, look after your loved ones, and we'll see you again in the next video. Now, don't forget, there's also going to be a ride out set up soon um, to support and thank the NHS. Masses and masses of people. There's a Facebook page called Band of Blue or something, NHS, Band of Blue. Um, there's going to be a massive ride out just to say thank you to the NHS. 
we're going to be going on that ride out and it's going to be lots and lots throughout the entire country so hopefully we'll possibly see you at one of those or we'll meet somewhere along the way but yes a bit of a poignant moment to end so until next time please ride and drive carefully if you are an essential key worker if not walk and use toilet paper carefully and until next time bye bye cheers have fun well i forgot the rest tea i need tea oh i just want to add in massive thank you to nick thank you very much for doing the fork seals on my ntv scrambler build there you go anything to say no no hope you're happy with them i'm sure i will be bye